Hey guys, so I've got a new MacBook Pro, and uh, within a couple months, I spilled some of my smoothie, some really sticky beet juice, in the keyboard and damaged it. And uh, I'm going to show you some of the process that I went through in trying to get it repaired. Oh my god. And uh, what I actually did to remedy the problem, and maybe this uh, could help somebody else. So let me talk about the problem. This is the info bar model, it doesn't matter. What really matters are these keys. Uh, you can see these are these new uh, short throw uh, keys that use some butterfly mechanism. I don't know. They're really annoying. Let me show you my last keyboard. I think this is the 2014 model, but you can see that uh, these have a little bit more throw on them. Man, I really, really miss this keyboard. Um, in fact, I miss this whole uh, laptop in itself because it was so it's so much better than this one. I have had nothing but trouble. Uh, trouble with this new keyboard and the short throw and how easily the uh, keyboard is damaged and at first glance you would think oh this is great uh, there's a larger uh, touchpad than the previous model but what I found is that when I'm typing uh, you get some palm um, my palm will rub against it and then my cursor will be thrown uh, two paragraphs up from where I'm writing and then it'll, you know, I'm just inserting text and making gibberish and uh, it's been, I hate this keyboard There's so, and I hate this laptop in general. Where's my USB ports? <laughs> so I was drinking my morning smoothie as I usually do and I set it down, I don't know, I think I laughed at something I saw on the screen and um, it caused me to maybe spit some out of my mouth or something, but anyways, I had some sticky brown liquid right here and I didn't think of anything of it at the time. I waited a, like an hour or two before I cleaned it up. I'm a messy guy. And um, But when I came back to it the next day, and other people will have uh, similar right problems with this keyboard, really, really but sticky. mostly I've seen just like people drop crumbs in here and then what they'll do is flip the Mac over on its uh, upside down and then kind of like pat it like a baby that you're burping and the crumbs will eventually fall out but I couldn't do that these are sticky keys so what I read online is uh, a lot of people had good luck with these this is a sim uh, unlock tool uh, that pops out your sim in your uh, cell phone so if you buy a cell phone they usually come with something like this and you can use something small even like uh, a credit card or something like that and then you kind of just wedge it in at the top of the key and then and then pry it up now you got to be really, really careful here, and I wouldn't advise this because you will damage the keyboard. It is so easy to damage, and that's exactly what I did. The keys have to be taken off in a certain order, and you have to be really, really careful. As you can see, I have all my keys uh, working for the most part right now. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but some of them, I, I broke them all in different ways. Uh, it's just so annoying. Um, like this one was just popping out every time I uh, type on it. Anyway, let me show you uh, how easy these things are to break. So here's a close up of the back side of that control key. And there's plastic tabs, there's like four of them in the opposing corners there. And uh, those, uh, if you don't put it, the key back on exactly the right way, then you'll end up cracking uh, the, these little keys. And uh, you're pretty much screwed when you do that. So I started researching how much this would cost to repair online. Now if you're in your Apple Care period, it's going to cost you about $350 out of pocket. Now this has been, I'm out of warranty, it's been over a year since I got this. And uh, the quotes that I read online for Apple to replace it would be about $700, over $700. So I looked online and it looks like you can buy replacement keys. This is for the uh, 2017 model that I have. You can see the price per key, it's uh, $12.95. So uh, when you do the math on that, we're talking uh, $51. I had four keys that needed to be replaced, um, plus shipping. And, um, but, you know, knowing how easy it is to break these keys, even if I got new ones, and uh, just the fact that I have such bad eyesight, um, I opted to find a repair shop locally and there really weren't many places that actually would repair this nobody even wanted to touch it um, I did find a guy that said he would do it he advertised on Craigslist but it was over an hour drive away so I ended up driving down there I spent all day he told me that I'd be in there and I'd get out of there within an hour well every time I left and came back he was helping out customers that had just walked in so um, it ended up being a good five hours of my day and um, you know when he quoted me he said it would be about 50 bucks but uh, by the time I was out the door he upped the charge and it went up to 110 dollars 
So I feel like I was kind of ripped off there. And if you know about repairing anything electronic-wise, it's never as good as when it came from the factory. And so was the case with this. Um, every one of these keys, while they work, um, they're just a little bit different. And, um, yeah, it's just not as quite as good as it was. Uh, what's more is... Uh, my tilde key went out. I use that a lot in the terminal, and and then the uh, the two stopped working too. So why did all this happen? <laughs> I have no idea. So here I am, a hundred and ten dollars invested in this, and uh, the problem is a little bit better than it was when I started, but it's still annoying to type on, man. It sucks. So um, I'm looking for some other alternatives, and let me show you what I did. So I decided I do what most people do in this situation and just not use the laptop keyboard and trackpad and use my own keyboard and mouse and I was about to buy a mouse online after watching some YouTube videos this one comes highly rated the Logitech MX Master so I uh, placed an order for that and then I cancelled the order because I realized something I had the magic keyboard this was sitting in my drawer it's a wireless Mac keyboard and what I really like about it is that it's got the old uh, distance for the throw of the key. I just prefer this keyboard way more than this uh, the short throw on these new, new keyboards. But look at this. Look at this coincidence. Oh my god, it fits right over where the internal keyboard goes perfectly. So I canceled the Logitech MX Master order. And now I can just use this as an external keyboard and type on it and still use the old trackpad because I really do like this trackpad when it's not interfering with my typing on the keyboard. But there is one problem. If you haven't guessed it, it's uh, when you're typing on this, the slight pressure uh, makes you press some of your actual internal keyboard keys. So what to do about that? Oh, and one other thing. Yeah, there is. Uh, this does cover the info uh, bar up here that you pay like a good uh, hundred dollars extra, or two hundred bucks extra for. But you know what? I found out. I found that I never use that thing anyways. It's just another feature of these Macs that I don't like. I don't like this Mac anyway. So now the problem to solve is how do I disable the internal keyboard? Let me show you. So there's this third-party app, uh, Carabiner. You go to pqrs.org kara beaner and it allows you to remap keys on your keyboard using an external keyboard and once you install the app you go under uh, devices and then down here uh, you can see that uh, disable the built-in keyboard while one of the following selected devices is connected and you can see my magic keyboard is right here so I just check that alright perfect now when I'm typing um, I'm typing on this keyboard and it's not affecting, uh, the pressure is not hitting these keys down here. So this works pretty well. I'll probably figure out a way to adhere this in place, but it doesn't really slide around for the most part. So anyway, this is working pretty well. So all in all, I wish I would have gone uh, for this route in the first place instead of using uh, a repair shop to do this. And, um, you know, attempt to, to fix the key yourself, and if you can't, just know that you can always get one of these Apple Magic keyboards and uh, do what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah, this worked out pretty well, so hopefully it continues to work. Um, I'll post any updates if I have any. Now I can type on this keyboard, and it works flawlessly. And we've got the old keyboard style, where it's a little bit larger uh, throw here in the key. I hate the, this keyboard short throw. If you damage this internal keyboard... This trick works too. The only downside that I've run into, if you have the info bar model, this does cover that, but you can move it out of the way and use it. Did you like that tip? Well, give me a tip by giving me an upvote on this video. Take care, guys. Hope this works well for you.